Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a tutorial talking about this uh, shader displacement reviewing effect uh, I've done recently. Uh, shader displacement in EV is a known topic. I've discussed that uh, many years ago. And uh, recently it was uh, again brought up uh, in a much more popular channel. So I decided to just do a very light version of it to study. And uh, let's talk about some basic principles, pros and cons uh, part of it. So let's start. So here we in Blender, as always, I'm going to use the preset which you can download for free from the link in the description. I noticed that uh, some people have a misunderstanding that this effect relies a lot on the topology of your mesh, but it doesn't. Uh, that's why I showed a wireframe render to suggest uh, the characteristic of this effect. Uh, this effect does not really rely on topology. There will be certain issues, but I will discuss it later. But uh, basically, uh, low poly is the characteristic of it. And uh, here I'm just going to start with a default plane so that we only have four vertices. And then let's start with the presets, which is a few volume. But this is very simple. It's like a geometry nodes 101 that you're basically just the instancing different layers of it. And yet the rest is about the parameters uh, like counts, displacement sides, mid levels. But these are kind of the simple things you can do in your free times. But basically that's it. There's uh, really nothing special with these uh, presets. Next, uh, we can go into the shader editor. Uh, let's add in material first. And let's set this material. And let's go through the shader editor. Uh, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to start with a noise texture first. And this is how this noise texture looks. And uh, another important thing is that uh, when I create different layers, I made an attribute called SD, which stands for Shader Displacement. You can name it to whatever you want based on the SD gradient. The only bad part is that you cannot uh, make a node group to set the name. So I, if you're using this preset, I hope you not to change the name. And uh, basically, you are starting from the first instance to the last instance, and you make a gradient from 0 to 1. Okay, And uh, you are comparing with any displacement map with this number. So you end up with a shader displacement preset which you can feed into Arba. And uh, now, if we look at this uh, principal BSDF, you can see the top layer is black with zero alpha, and the bottom part is still white. Okay. And we can make the alpha uh, functional when you're changing different modes. Uh, let's enable the alpha clip, actually, yes. And uh, let's enable the alpha hash for shadow. So this is the result we end up with. And uh, you can enable ambient occlusion, screen space reflection, and uh, we have a light. So let's take a sunlight. And uh, let's go to render the view. So you can see we have these uh, shadows and so on. And we can enable the contact shadow, which will make it look much better. Right now, it contains many flaws, as you can see different layers. Sometimes this is what uh, people would like to do as well. Uh, but uh, in this case, I would like to uh, make that invisible. So let's just increase the count so that we hide that. Uh, here, I want to remind you that uh, if you're using alpha hashed, uh, it does not looking like anything changed. It's OK, but uh, if you're using alpha blend, then you will lose all this kind of shadow. So you want to use alpha clip uh, in most cases. 
And uh, yes, once you have done that, it's basically yet. And the rest is about changing parameters, making that uh, displacement larger, smaller, and uh, try to deal with your textures. Uh, since this uh, is based on textures, and the texture is based on every pixels you see from your camera. So you can make that as detailed as possible. And uh, just, a rem uh, just uh, be aware that we are really starting from a four vertices plane in this setup. Okay. Previously, I've already imported a JS displacement texture, which has a very good looking of this uh, uh, motherboards, whatever stuff. Okay, and I really like using it. Uh, I think for some reason the website was down, but I believe people still own a copy somewhere on the internet, including me myself. And uh, again, it can work for any texture. So whether you have a marble, you have a ground, you have a rock, they will all work. Okay. Uh, in this case, it's very nice in this particular case because uh, if you're working with uh, cycles displacement, then all these kind of cutting edges require a high amount of uh, subdivision, which will be very difficult. Okay. So now we have this kind of uh, setup. The rest is about how to uh, make the layers out of it. Uh, it's basically a math function that uh, this UV is going from uh, 0 to 1 on each axis. Sometimes it's not very easy to distinguish this kind of color. But if you separate x, y, z, you can see how everything goes. That you have 0 to 1 on x axis and 0 to 1 on y axis. Okay. This is a little bit simpler. So now what we can do is you just uh, try to add this value. Uh, we can use a uh, mass minimum instead. The reason I use this uh, mass minimum is because that uh, you go from a very low negative number, it's black, and no matter how you increase this value, it will be clamped at your displacement map. If you're using other methods, then you will end up to make this displacement map fully white. Then you will lose all this kind of displacement. So I'd like to use this minimum. Okay. And basically, this is just a math function. Uh, if we directly look at it, so we go from nothing and you're building this displacement from layers to layers. So here we can directly put this x-axis uh, into this minimum function and we can use an plus minus to control the flow of this uh, gradient transition and it looks kind of very boring so we can add something more so let's add another add and this time I'm going to add a Voronoi texture and uh, if you're Looking at this Voronoi texture, it looks like this. It's kind of very boring, so let's use the choppy chap. So now we have this kind of a square-like texture. So once we then that, then we should have a transition not only on this x, y axis, but we are also displacing uh, the layers with this uh, uh, Voronoi texture. If I do not have this x axis, then it will just be a layer from bottom to top with this Voronoi texture. Okay, it also looks kind of cool. Uh, it really depends on what you want to do, but there are many different kind of variations. And uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, that uh, you can also use other whatever textures you want. It's just a Voronoi texture 
fit more in this particular JSDS placement case for sci-fi looking. Okay. And uh, the rest is also about the maths. That if we look at this plus and minus, and we can color ramp it to restrict this uh, white flow to a certain point, and we can make uh, the rest black. Let's make it into a constant, and then we can use these white uh, textures into the emission shader. So now if I'm adding it, you can see the terminals are uh, emitting light, and then we can texture it, maybe red colors, and then we can turn on the strength, we can turn on the bloom, then we have a transition effect. Okay. So this is quite simple. So this is the basic setup and uh, it's essentially kind of procedural. Uh, let's uh, create another object. Uh, uh, no, let's create a, another plane, but this time going with uh, a geometry node tree. So let's go to the geometry nodes editor. And then let's add another tree. So instead of uh, using the plane I generated, let's with let's go with uh, any procedural texture. So for example, a cylinder or UV sphere. I do not really care. And uh, we we'll basically use a, a node group version of it. And we still set the same material. And it doesn't really work. This is because the UV map is not registered. So I've discussed these kind of things in the past in my UV map tutorial. So you basically need a UV layer and then you increase the counts doing the parameters and so on, change the mid levels more or less. And sometimes for uh, this kind of story with map, it will not be registered into this uh, texture coordinate, so it might be better if you use attribute node and type in the attribute you registered. But in this case, it was not, it uh, was working properly, so it, it does not really change anything yet. And then you play with these values. You can see we have this cylinder revealing effect. Everything is kind of a procedural. It's also possible that you use a Suzanne. But uh, you need to be aware that the uh, Suzanne hat is not so really easy for displacement by itself. Okay. But we can still try. Let's put this Suzanne hat into. And I do not uh, need to store a UV map because it contains a UV map by its own. And then looking at the result, you can see. Uh, the displacement looks kind of ugly, but we can still do it with a kind of a tiny amount. And then if we look at the, the surrender and we animate it, it looks like this, looks kind of cool. But you may also see that because of the UV map of Suzanne is uh, very weird, the reviewing effect goes to be weird too. Uh, in that case, you can try to create a gradient uh, with uh, maybe generated, which is also a way, so that you goes to left and the right. This generated coordinate is basically using a bounding box from the left bottom corner to the right upper corner. That's why it's working in this way. Okay. So there are lots of things you can do, and there can be many different variations. I can also use a noise texture, as I mentioned earlier. And it's uh, basically the same. Another important thing 
is that uh, you may not just use a single texture. You can also add some variances to it because, for example, you can even add a SD layer. to the z-axis so that's a different layer is having a different texture and uh, let's take the UV map into the coordinate so now you have a different texture in layers for this uh, removing effect and it doesn't look actually nice but uh, anyway so these are just the possibilities. At the end, it depends on what kind of creativities you can come up with with this kind of setup. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.